what we have to study human health and diseases so just like first we have reproduction then genetics now biology and human welfare so it's easy you have to study pathogens parasites causing human diseases common cold dengue chikungunya typhoid all the diseases name the wire the vector the pathogen the symptoms and how you can treat the disease okay then we have cancer then we have cancer different cancer like types of tumor benignant and malignant benignant tumor is tumor which is stationary it will not move malignant is like it moves from one part to another no this is malignant is dangerous benignant is just like you sometimes you get that warts and all yeah hey some could be called some key and all that then uh, immunity we have acquired passive humoral cell mediator then immunoglobins vaccine and immunization aids autoimmunity then aids drugs and alcohol okay so let's start with the first part so we have to directly start from communicable and non communicable disease but initially they have given some parts so let's see them okay the first part is what is a disease okay a disease means new chapter yeah new chapter new chapter human health and disease human health and disease so disease is physical or functional change from the normal state okay it can be either physical or functional change from the normal that causes discomfort or disability or impairs the health of a living organism okay any physical or functional change what are some physical changes uh, like uh, that what is that physical fracture okay. functional means internal changes functions so, of some gun, uh, stomach is not working properly so some fever which you get yellow yeah. fever jaundice so, jaundice jaundice yellow so don't write people are functional functional jaundice because your liver is not working mm -hmm. properly that's why they give that leave the people tablets himalaya don't write this this is you write on your own word what is l the well-being of physical, physical mental the state of physical, physical mental and social well-being health is the state of physical social and mental well-being so this is not don't read anything huh? just i'll tell when to start because this is just introduction we have to directly start from communicable diseases of virus because there is not to that so don't read notes then disease causing agent which what are the disease causing agent called parasites, parasites pathogens correct okay, right. so we have biological agents of pathogen so agents can be either biological or pathogen there can be some worms which can enter in your body or some virus some bacteria some fungi they can enter in your body and cause disease what other agents you think if there is biological then fungi bacterial protozoa fungi what other agents will be there first is biological second chemical, chemical agents so nutrient agent nutrient is nothing but chemical agent only somewhat like chemical sometimes we eat some stale food so it can cause food poisoning then we have chemical agents okay some chemicals when it enters your body you can get some disease or some chemical when it falls on your while doing chemistry practical you can get rashes burns burns okay then physical agents what are physical agents um mosquito stuff malaria mosquito no no mosquito will be biological physical means hot something if your hand is burnt fire is physical no 
drowning correct then mechanical agents okay friction because of friction yeah you sleep you fall yeah Okay. Then the diseases are uh, classified into two types: congenital diseases and acquired diseases. Congenital diseases are diseases present since birth. Means you get it from your parents. Can you give Can you give one example of disease? Uh, sickle anemia. Sickle cell anemia, hemophilia, or even diabetes. Also, mm -hmm. you can show the symptoms later. Diabetes Diabetes can be transferred from generation to generation. Acquired diseases are developed after birth. Okay, under don't write on. Huh? I'll tell when to start. Lot of lot of thing is there. So communicable disease. What are communicable diseases? Disease which can spread from one person to another. Which is the latest communicable disease? So right, it can pass from one person to another. Viral fever. So non communicable diseases are diseases which do not spread from one person to other. non communicable diseases are like degenerative diseases caused due to malfunctioning of vital organ deficiency diseases what are deficiency diseases uh, deficiency of uh, nutrients which, which are the two common there iron rickets yeah, iron rickets kwashiorkor marasma night 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 okay then allergies you all know what is allergy hmm. Okay. Peanut energy. Yeah, your peanut energy is the most common. Hay hey, spray. Cat fur. Cat fur or dog fur, any fur. Okay, means allergy. Your body is sensitive to that substance. Okay, it will show allergic reaction. Cancer. Cancer cannot pass from one generation to another. And other diseases caused due to physical agents. Okay. Then next is. Don't write now. Communicable disease or disease caused by pathogen. Yeah, right. No, communicable disease or disease caused by pathogen. Okay. Which are the which are the different pathogens? Virus. Virus. Fungi. Fungi. Bacteria. Protozoa. Okay, all the five kingdoms, except any animal and plant. Okay. Then Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch established the germ theory of disease. Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch they established the germ theory of disease. So write this point. <clears throat> Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch established germ theory of disease. That means the disease is caused by a germ. There is people were not aware how the disease is to come. then they these two scientists told that the disease is caused because of germs and then coach robert coach he gave postulates okay it's easy to understand robert coach gave pathogenic disease postulates for pathogenic disease pathogenic disease means diseases which are caused because of pathogens okay so these are the postulates no need to write easy to understand from this only you can see the micro the microorganism but this is not going okay if there is a disease organism if there is a disease organism in this disease organism you will get the microorganism in this disease organism you will get the microorganism which causes the disease but in this a healthy one you will not get a microorganism which cause disease now if you remove the blood from this you will get the microorganism of this disease now what will happen if you take a blood sample and grow it on a agar plate the disease causing bacteria will grow on that agar plate okay the disease causing organism will go right on that agar what will you get if you grow anything on this that disease causing organism you will not get now if i take this disease causing bacteria and inject in this mouse what this mouse will show same disease the mouse will show the symptoms of this disease then again if i take blood from this and grow on this what i will get same that disease. bacteria these are the coach's co postulate four postulate first one is the microorganism must be found in abundance in all organism suffering from the disease but should not be found in a healthy person 
it should found in abundance little microorganism is present every day but this if he is showing disease it will be in abundance the microorganism must be isolated from the disease organism and grown on a pure culture medium then the cultured organism should cause disease when introduced in a healthy organism and again the microorganism must be re isolated from the inoculated disease experimental host and identified as being identical to the original one so this one which one is taken out this one which is taken out should be same as this one that is coach postulates next we'll go to reservoir of pathogens what is reservoir of uh, like the place place where they are collected so can you tell where this uh, pathogens will be found oh, yeah. in, uh, uh, in, dirty in dirty places like soil dirty soil dirty water dirty air so first you see it is found in the vector okay it is found in the vector okay it is found in vector then it is also found in food if the food is not kept properly or if it is for long period kept for long period then microbes will grow and in soil water and air okay so this is reservoir where it is found next mode of transmission how this disease are transmitted through water through water Air, mosquito, air, mosquito vector. Bye. So, mode of transmission can be direct or indirect. Okay. Which are the direct, direct transmission? Direct contact with the infected person. If you come in direct contact with the infected person, which other mode? Direct mode? Oh, mosquito biting. Droplet infection. If the person is suffering from that disease, if I am suffering, if I sneeze, you are in close contact with me. So that sneeze can go directly in your body. The particles. Contact with soil. Okay. If you come in contact with soil, for example, tetanus is the most common. Animal bite. Rabies. Rabies. Animal bite, the most common is rabies because of dog. Indirect transmission will be vectors. What are vectors? Mosquito, yeah, disease carrying organism. Medium. Yeah, the disease carrying organisms are called as yeah. vectors. For example, if I am suffering from malaria, there will be a special mosquito which will take that malarial plasmodium in other organisms. Then the second is vehicle bone. Vehicle bone is like food and water. If you are eating one burger, if you are having disease. The same burger, if I eat, then I will get the disease. Mm -hmm. so then, the... airborne. If you sneeze here in the air, there will be the disease causing germ. If the other batch, class 11, comes and sit here, they will also get the disease. Similarly, there will be fomite bone. Fomite bone is contaminated articles. Okay, fomite bone means contaminated articles. For example, sharing your pen, pencil, book, the articles are fomite. Okay, they are already diseased. Okay. okay, so these are the modes of transmission. Copy one minute. Yeah. I'll give you PowerPoint if you want, but don't copy. Pathogenicity and virulence. Okay, let's see what is pathogenicity and virulence. Okay. How pathogen cause disease? Let's see. Or uh, the question is what it will do when it enters your body? What the pathogen will do? It will try to affect the effect. Yeah. Affect. Okay. The uh, body immunity. Body's immunity. Okay. So these are the three ways it can work. First, the pathogen will start killing the cell. You can see immune cell or any cell, blood cells. Or the organ cell. Second, what it can do? Use the food materials. Okay. For example, if you are food, is, you are eating food. Your the food will be digested. That digested food is used by a tapeworm. Okay. 
so you are getting disease you are feeling hungry you are getting loose motions that is it will use the food whichever it is eaten the third way is to produce the third way is it produces toxin the pathogen will produce toxin okay so next is cause of a disease now right don't write what is so it will it will come in both cause of a disease okay will the microbe now imagine esther was not well she talks with you all she is transferred the pathogen in you will it will it show the symptoms directly soon you will show the symptoms no it will show after one day or two day that is called incubation period the time taken for the germ to enter the body the time between the entry of the body and to show the symptom is called incubation period okay. see you. the interval between infection and the first appearance of the disease symptom is called incubation period incubation you all know what is incubation you have heard if the baby is born before 9 months then it is kept in a incubator okay that is called incubation period or even the uh, eggs okay so this so many eggs poultry and all what they do they keep the eggs in a incubator one female what do you call hen no one hen cannot sit together on so many eggs and make babies so in huge industrial process they take all the eggs they keep it in the incubator they maintain the temperature and then the eggs are hatched so incubation is keeping allowing the germ to grow here the germ has to first enter in your body it should get adjusted to your body it should grow it should multiply and then only you will see the symptoms some organism which have high immune system they the germ cannot grow and that's why symptoms are not seen so your incubation period how long it takes for an infected person to show symptom how long it takes for an infected person to show symptom now study of communicable disease what we have to study we have to study the pathogen the mode of infection symptoms and prophylaxis and control prophylaxis is like giving medicine which is usually taken after the disease there is difference between vaccine and prophylaxis what is vaccine when we take vaccine before the disease or after the disease No, before, before we take vaccine to prevent from getting disease, whereas prophylaxis is medicine which is given by a doctor after the disease. After the disease, especially antibiotics, you take you don't take antibiotics before only before the disease and try to prevent from getting the disease. But vaccines we take so that we don't get the disease prevention. Okay, now we'll come to the first one. You have to write this. so viral disease the first disease is common cold okay the first disease is common cold yeah yeah better to write so the pathogen is rhinovirus what are the symptoms of common cold you all know even for exam it might not come common cold sneezing coughing nasal congestion discharge what is hoarseness Oh, okay. Gallery is cheese. No, that is not nice. No. Yeah, that that. No, no. Horse nose. That big skin horse nose. That they don't know. Then gala saaf hone. Sore throat, headache and tiredness. The infections is directly or indirectly. Okay. Transfer and treatment. No treatment is suitable for common cold. We don't have any special treatment. It goes after three to seven days. now you all can write Sorry. yeah i am the next these are the symptoms of common cold runny nose fever rhinitis what is rhinitis bemre kadbe bemre kadbe cough then fainting, fainting sore throat headache <laughs> and weakness <laughs> fainting <laughs> fainting fainting go on go on Painting is also good. Painting is also good. Yes. 
then second one is dengue what are the pathogen pathogen is dengue virus and vector is a aedes mosquito <laughs> occurrence it is widespread especially in delhi and the adjoining areas more common and symptoms low fever fatigue running nose cough headache body ache and break bone fever the fever causes pain in your bone that's why it is called as break bone fever bleeding from the nose mouth and digestive tract usually after second infection and it is called as hemorrhagic fever so these two points important are huh? you right and fluid in the lungs also is found which cause difficulty in breathing so yeah platelet count will drop in dengue now prevention there is no vaccine mostly for virus no it is very difficult to get vaccine so you write any food but the last one is now these are the symptoms of high fever headache nausea vomiting body aches and rashes the last one is chicken gunia now chicken gunia is caused due to a virus chicken gunia virus and it is transferred by aedes aegypti and aedes allopictus these are the vectors okay so here you are getting both pathogen and vector huh? vector is aedes aegypti and aedes allopictus so symptoms of vectors are these huh? aedes aegypti and aedes allopictus they are both mosquito high fever headache vomiting photophobia what is photophobia photophobia this one Photophobia means light. Photo means light. Phobia means care of light. Joint pains, swelling and rashes. Because of arthritis, patient develops to posture. The disease is called as bent up disease. Stoop posture. Treatment, no specific treatment. The doctors will give you paracetamol, diclofenac, sodium. Prevention and control is prevent mosquito breeding. No, you all know how to prevent mosquito breeding. So if they ask a question, how to prevent mosquito breeding or how to control this disease, right. Okay. Don't allow water to get stagnated. Okay. Don't keep your waste properly. Tires inside the tire, inside the coconut shell. Don't allow water to get collected in any buckets. Keep the buckets. Sleep with yeah, sleep with mosquito, apply mosquito gels, apply use toys, <laughs> net.